Good morning, and as I hope the thumbnail uh, grabbed your attention, uh, let's feast our attention on this beautiful sunrise yonder. It's uh, absolutely gorgeous. It's early fall. We're about halfway through September. The temperature is fantastic. The sky is beautiful. It is most certainly fall, and I love it. I, uh, it's about a month away from my camping trip. It's the middle of October, so you've got about five weeks. You've got another two and a half weeks to let me know if you're coming or not. Uh, we still have less than 10 people saying that they're going to come. So this year's looking like it's going to be even smaller than last year. If this trend keeps up, I'm not even going to do this trip in a year or two. So, I don't know. Uh, previous years I've had 20. And uh, this year I've got like 6. So I don't know. Is it just, am I getting old hat? Do I have fewer followers that want to go camping? Or do people just not want to do the same thing year to year? I don't know. Does the newness of it wear off? I don't know. But regardless, we'll still have a camping trip, even if five or six people come. I'm still going to do it. So, uh, the thing I want to talk about today is is kind of like... It, it's like my philosophy and some of my reasoning behind how I think and feel about politics, right? I do think that there is a very evil force at play that works through men. Whether you call that Satan or something else. I don't know. Like, again, I'm, I'm agnostic. I don't know. I don't know what to call evil. But whether you, whether it's these, you know, anti-white Jewish Marxists, whether it's big state crony assholes that just want power, whether it's deep state actors that want to forge some kind of global military agenda, or pick your, pick your evil, right? These things sort of culminate along the same lines of power. They're bad. The EU's bad. NATO's bad. The United States federal government's bad. I think Putin's probably pretty bad. We know China's bad. Everything's bad, right? Well, what can we do about that? Well, me and you personally, we can't really do much. And so this is why I've sort of detached many years ago from caring about a political system or, or a socioeconomic structure. I don't really care about those things. Because regular folks like us can't really do anything about that stuff. There's really nothing that can be done to change our system, the way that we vote, who we can vote for. You and I have very little power over that at all. What do we have power over? Our own actions? The people we can influence in our community? The local political stuff that we can grab hold of? Like sheriff's office? Whatever your mayoral executive or governor or mayor happens to be in local politics, if you can influence that. Those are the little things that we can influence politically. But even that, I don't really think is worth most people caring about. Because I don't think most people have the mind for power. And I see, that's, I see that as a real problem. It's because if the game of power is played by those who it calls to. Power is always going to be played by people who aren't like me and you. I don't want power, but they do. You probably don't want power. They do. Your family and children and church don't want power. They do. And so, it philosophically, mentally, it takes me places that always lead to the same thing, which is a very sort of useless libertarian mindset of take care of your own people, invest in your local community, and prepare to live separate from every state and every government and every people in the world. Because if shit goes bad, we can't rely on anything but what we have around us and the bonds of friendship, networking, community, family that we have cultivated. And I know that that sounds kind of defeatist, but... I think to myself, the last 11 years that I've been politically engaged, I haven't really gotten anything accomplished. I've written letters, I've made calls, I've pressured locally, but locally where I live, sheriff's pretty based, the local politicians are, you know, tepidly based, things are okay here in the, the county I live in in East Tennessee. Things are good. We're not having hardly any demographic change. There's a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. 
uh, happening around the cities, of course. And uh, I'm just waving hi to my friend there. Good morning. I'll move the camera so uh, it doesn't get her license plate number on there. There we go. Uh, anyway. So, uh, anyway, um, what, what I was talking about. I think little actions, I guess, can matter. But when it comes to all of the evil people in governments and, and alphabet agencies and then corporations, I feel so powerless to do anything about that. It's one of the things I like about the Go Free stuff that the, the white well-being community does is at least with using their particular mimetic language approach, you can pressure and force people in a way that going at the targets of that stuff with different language doesn't seem to succeed. Doesn't seem to have success, I should say. So I like that, and like even locally, I've used the go-free technique of saying, hey, this is anti-white, I don't like it. This is against my people in this area, I want you to change this. I have used that to limited success locally here, which is cool, so I know it works. But that alone is not going to take power. That alone is not going to upset or unseat the thousands and thousands of crony bureaucrats and corrupt information agents and shit that are just embedded in the swamp. That's going to take somebody with real kingly action that I doubt Trump is capable of or even willing to do. So let's say he is, though. Here's the next point of where I'm going with all of this. Let's say Trump is even 10% of the despotic dictator that the, the, the anti-white media says he is, right? Let's say he actually does get in there and starts chopping heads, so to speak. Just massive purges of the swamp. Those people don't stop existing. And the things they know and the connections they have don't vanish. Their state power and their official station and their salaries might vanish. But who those people are, what motivates them, how crony they are, the hatred and the jealousy and the spite they have for us doesn't go away. Where do those people go? Right? Where do they go? What do they do? They're still there. They still exist. It's just... You get rid of them in the official capacity, and you at least temporarily neuter their state power. Well, Trump only has, at best, a four-year term. He's old. He might even die before he's done. What comes next? We don't have another king. We don't have another leader. We don't have any other figurehead of this drain-the-swamp shit. Nothing like Trump. He's a one-of-a-kind... Whether you like him or hate him, I don't care. I don't particularly like him. But... He is a super-duper charismatic, kingly-type individual that is a leader of men. He demonstrates that. Where is the next one? Where is the 30- or 40-year-old version of that to lead us? I can't name one. There are men who I wish could lead us, but they're obscure. Not wealthy, not connected. A big part of being able to lead is having wealth and fame. And I, that sucks, but that's just true. And we don't have anybody like that. Maybe Mel Gibson. If Mel, Mel Gibson is the Trump I want, I'll just be honest. Which, but granted, I mean, even, that's, that's just like, you know, copium stuff. I don't really think he would get anything done. But the thing that, that, that always brings me back to where I'm at now is after spending 11 years of my life actively, passionately engaging in this culture war shit, going down all the conspiracy theory rabbit holes, learning about all the lies of the government and the media, and you know what we were lied to about, about the war between states in America, about World War I and II, about the Vietnam War, about all this other shit. What we were lied to about other things, about demographics and racial differences, and who said what to who, and all these other things that we've been lied to about and gaslit about our whole lives, and our parents' whole lives, and our grandparents' lives. It just makes me feel like the people who want to detach and just be separatists, they sort of have it right. Because without leadership, without a banner, what are we besides angry rabble? And in the last five years, 
studying elite theory and listening to the, the dissident right stuff, I don't agree with all of their, their takes, especially about my base Catholic monarchy. Good luck building that, guys. Go ahead. I wish you the best. But I have learned that power itself is, is kind of like a force. And it takes men to guide it, shape it, and harvest it. And without, without a banner, without unity, all of us, of us angry, dissident white people, we're not going to be able to use power because we're disorganized, we're disparate, we're spread out. We care about working the land, raising our kids. We care about the things that matter to us. We care about small things. They're important, beautiful things, but we care about small things. The few of us who care about getting engaged, like myself, and are willing to take power, we have a sea of conflicting, arguing, different political camps of thought. You've got the pan-European, super-state, Aryan nuts people, like your Richard Spencers. You've got other types of ethno-nationalists, white nationalists. Um, uh, in Europe, you've got, uh, I, I don't know exactly what the phrase is, but you've got people who are like that there in their countries. Over in America, you have different groups that are a mix of neo-Nazi, white nationalists, KKK, old-timey neo-Confederates, You've got people that are just disgruntled, angry libertarian types that want their state to secede from the Union. So many of us are motivated to care and motivated to do something. But we don't have a leader. We don't have a banner. Because all of these different groups think that they have it right. I don't really like any of these groups. I'm not a member of any of them, and I don't specifically identify with any of them. But I know that none of them have the numbers and the wealth and the fame and the figurehead to unify us and take power. There's just, there's something about the time that we live in that's cursed. Where the entire system and everything around it and everything about it excludes us to the degree that we have no in. We have no way in. We have no way to grab the levers of power. We have no way to even begin influencing the system by the system. And that's by design. And so I'm not saying that we should all do Fed posty stuff. Like, you know, I'm not saying do terrorism. I'm saying, though, that if motivated people want to go after a system like that, you do, you, they've really given us no choice other than taking a wrecking ball to the wall and rebuilding the system from the broken pieces of it. And that's what the whole drain the swamp thing with Trump is about, right? It's like, look how corrupt the federal government is. Look how, what a rotten bed of snakes Washington's become in the last hundred years. Look how ugly and, and nasty these alphabet agencies are. NSA, CIA, FBI, like, even CDC. Like, these people are just crony, evil, scumbag bureaucrats. So... The, the Fed Post thing to do there is something that a president can kind of do, which is drain the swamp and just start taking an axe to all these agencies and just stripping people out and saying, this is bad, get rid of it. But even still, if we have a Trump that does that, they don't stop existing, do they? They just go away for a few years and then they come right back when the next crony asshole takes power and says, oh, all that stuff Trump did... Well, here's some executive orders. Everybody come back and keep being the anti-white hate machine. Keep being the warmongers. Keep pushing this jingoist propaganda to brainwash Americans. Come on back in, guys. The water's fine now. That Trump, that Trump guy's gone. He can't come back. Come on back in. Nothing stops the next president from doing that. See, that I'm forward thinking on this. And so where does that take my mind? That takes my mind to what we talk about behind closed doors. There's going to come a time where we can't rely on our infrastructure, on our government, on our laws at all. And unless something dramatic happens, which it very well might looking at the world stage, I don't see a way to vote our way out of this. Why do I say that? Because look who the votes are counted by, and look how the people we're allowed to vote for are calculated. 
megacorps, deep state, the state itself, people with deep pockets, Clinton Foundation, Bill Gates, etc. These people with their money and their desires, and of course there's European, uh, continental European versions of that, right? Like you've got uh, your, your World Economic Forums, uh, you've got Party of Davos, same shit over there too, just, and a lot of the people are the same on both sides of the sea. But these people, they aren't people that we can vote away. They're, they're never going to be people we can vote away. They exist no matter what party wins an election. They don't care. They're invested. Their agents are usually in Labor or Democrats here in the English-speaking world. But they don't really care as long as the agenda gets forwarded. They don't care if it's a Republican or Democrat. They don't care if it's a Tory or Labor. They don't give a shit. These people can be bought and paid for regardless. They can be blackmailed. And this is why I have become not very hopeful about any political change that doesn't involve a war or violence. I'm not saying that you should do terrorism. You should not. I don't want to do it. You shouldn't do it. I'm talking about some kind of conflict, maybe between Russia and Europe, maybe between Russia and America, maybe between China and Russia and America, or Iran too. I don't know. But without some major catalyst to loosen the grip of all of these evil anti-white oligarchs on the systems that they've sunk their tentacles into the last hundred years, I don't see a way that you and I can make a difference in that. But we can make a difference around us. We can build good families and be connected. We can meet. We can do meetups like I do twice a year to stay connected to people. You can join the OGC chapter near you. You can join the, the Go Free Club near you. You can work with people who actually have their heads in the game and are doing intelligent things to plan for our future, like the two groups I just mentioned. And I'm sure there are others out there. Those are just the two that I'm part of that I know. You can do healthy, wise things that don't put you at extreme risk at all, or any risk, really. At least for now. <laughs> and I think that's what most of us should do. Myself included. So that's my talk about sort of my philosophy of where I'm at. I don't really care about Republicans and Democrats. I don't care about what system is better. I don't argue, you know, libertarian this versus, uh, you know, more authoritarian that or classic liberalism versus modern liberalism. Like, I just, I'm sick of all that. None of that stuff matters because we can't change any of it. Nobody out here is going to be is going to campaign and say, "Okay, my campaign is we're going to radically change the entirety of our socioeconomic structure and instead of doing whatever America is, we're going to do a Catholic monarchy now or we're going to do a national socialism now or we're going to do a Marxist communism now." That's just not going anywhere. This American machine, this beast, this bureaucracy is what it is. And it's a combination of all the different things that I mentioned. That's just how socioeconomic structures are in massive empires. They are what they are. They're a culmination of all the things they roll over and eat across the years. And it becomes the beast that we know. And like I said in one of my articles, I think it was Why the Big Lie, I said that it's, it's wrong to call the, the evil cunts that rule over us, it's wrong to call them communists or Nazis, because they're not those things. It's something else now. Like, the... The, the words and the labels and, and the, the structures of the early 1900s that, that still linger over us in a shadow, the things we have today aren't really like that. However, like uh, News Fist bangs on about all the time, the ideology and the approach of most of these evil people is Marxist in nature. That is true. But I'm talking about government socioeconomic structures. Things aren't like they used to be. They're different. This beast is a culmination of all the awful things that we've encountered, defeated, and became in the last hundred years. I don't like it. I want it to change. But we don't really have much power to do that, do we? So all we can do is speak the truth, speak intelligently and wisely to anyone who will listen, build community with like-minded people, hopefully raise lots of wise, dedicated, talented children that understand reality and understand what we're up against. And then maybe one day they will inherit a better world by changing this empire or changing whatever piece of it falls to them. That's really all that I think that we can and should be doing. I just, I don't see really anything else that regular folks like me and you in bumfuck rural uh, America, there's really not much else we can do, is there? 
There really isn't. So we should embrace that. And we should network, make communities, make friends, do our best to raise good kids and be parts of good community groups and churches and stuff, and just do the best we can to, to weather the decay of this evil empire, all while keeping truth alive and preparing for the worst while praying and hoping for the best. That's where I'm at, guys. That's what I think. Do you think I'm wrong? You think I'm missing something? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say on this. Anyway, it's early Monday morning. And uh, I've got a long day of sifting through the trough to build Discordant Dragons tonight. So I'm going to go back in, make a little breakfast, and get to that. And I guess we'll stop here because it sure is pretty again. Over there is the hill I started on. And so we'll look back now and see. Ooh, look how pretty. Man, that sure is nice. Look at that. I'm very blessed to, to be from this area and live here. It sure is a gorgeous, idyllic shire. And I desperately wish that, that this can last. I don't want it to fall to ruin. I don't want the anti-whites to come in and mess it all up. I don't want to be overran by immigrants. I don't want to be taken over by Muslims or Africans or Chinese. I don't want Indians to come here and buy up everything. But I see that happening all over the West. I don't want that to happen here. Me and my people deserve better than that. And by God, I hope that we get better than that. Hope you all have a great week. I'll see you Thursday night. Me and Chris will be back for either Gulag Cafe or Empire of Lies. God bless everybody.